Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kodan Ring of Miracles, which is also the Hebrew letter Kuf, like hoof, not to be confused with Kaf, the letter Kaf. Um, so the le Hebrew letter Kuf is the Hebrew number 19. And this letter, Kuf, is really so mystical and so mysterious. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So uh, Kuf has several different meanings. The first meaning that I'm going to share with you is Kuf means holy, but it also means unholy. And on the surface, this letter is considered to be a letter of falsehood. And that is because, um, let me share my screen and bring the image up. Share. Okay, I assume you're seeing that. This is this is the letter Kuf. And if you saw my the previous uh, Code on Read video with the letter Hey, um, it is very similar to the letter Hey in that it has a, a horizontal and vertical um, makeup, like the Hey down here, and also has a separate left vertical line. But whereas the hay is considered the receiving of divine thought, thought being horizontal, horizontal, sorry, horizontal line, a speech here and action here, the kuf represents um, false thoughts, profane speech, and evil actions. Um, so it is it represents kind of the um, divine will versus ego will. Um, here's another thing about the, the Kuf. She is the only letter that goes below the baseline of all the other letters in the alphabet, meaning this line right here goes far below all the other letters. And that represents the fall of man. And it represents anyone who falls below the acceptable, falls below the cosmic laws, the, the Tao, who is evil in his actions. So therefore, Kuf is the holder of darkness in man and the physical realm. So in essence, you can say every human being alive is the letter Kuf or holds the letter Kuf. But she's not just the holder of darkness. She is also the holder of great light. So she is the purest of all the letters, she is the one that holds all the dichotomies in her. Um, she's not just a holder of these, of the light and the dark. She is also a heroine. She takes action as she is the destroyer of illusions by the knowledge of true light. Um, she has given man the power of separation between the real and the illusor illusory but also the ability to unite the two. And while I keep saying she, she is a feminine letter. And uh, I think someone mentioned on the call that this, the Ring of Miracles has a very uh, rather masculine tone and it does, but we have to remember when we are referring to the feminine, we're referring to the dark matter, the dark energy, the, uh, yeah, dark, dark, which includes both masculine and feminine. So we can think of this code on ring of miracles as both uh, being the hero and the heroine. Okay, so what else does Cuff represent? She represents humiliation, struggle, cosmic struggle, symbolic communication. She is also like a security shield representing cosmic strength, um, and she represents God as well as humankind. So once again, a dichotomy there. In the he Hebrew creation story, she alone was tasked to enter into the dark of humanity and evil. She has the task of supplying just enough energy for the darkness to survive in order to keep free will alive in man. And so it is 
she cre keeps, you know, you ask, why do we want to keep the darkness? Because without the darkness, we would not have any of the, the hunger to evolve. It's what prods us to evolve and to become better and to transform ourselves. So um, she, she allows man to have the ability to choose between his desires or, and transforming his desires for the love of God. Um, Kuf, should have turned my phone off. Kuf is the only force that can, the only letter and force that can sustain the force of dark darkness without yielding to its negative influences. So she's a very powerful letter or essence. Kuf is a channel of light, but maintains the perfect balance of light and dark within her essence. Additionally, and I will change pictures now. Let's see here. Kuf also uh, in, in old Hebrew was called the eye of the needle. And, she, and it also represents uh, monkey or baboon. And it's because um, she, <laughs> I'm getting all these interruptions. I'm sorry, that's a blue jay outside. I hope you, uh, I hope you can hear that because uh, it's lovely. Um, so Kuf represents the eye of the needle, and I'll explain that in a second, but she also represents, it means monkey or baboon, because she represents the monkey mind in man, and represents that man doesn't, the unconscious man doesn't live a, a truly authentic life. He is simply mimicking others like the apes do, and that he goes about his life doing his daily tasks in kind of a cold manner without warmth and heart. Um, speaking of the monkey mind, Kuf also represents our animal nature, our darkness, our evil side, but she is here to tell us that we have to learn to accept and not look down upon our animal nature. You know, we have, there is such thing as just anger, sorrow, grief. We, we cannot um, beat ourselves up for having those types of emotions. And we cannot look down upon our bodily functions. But we are also here to transform our animal nature so that we're not constantly giving into the monkey mind who just wants and wants and wants, you know, giving into our desires and especially our sexual desire for uh, constantly wanting to sp spilling the seed of God through orgasm. So what else? So the eye of the needle, Kuf physically represents uh, the medulla oblongata and, and it looks like an eye of the needle, but the representation here. Um, and the medulla oblongata is the connection from the brain to the, the spinal cord. And this represents all the, the regulation of the, the life-sustaining functions. So it represents the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Next picture. Okay, I think I'll close that out. We'll stop share. Let's see, did I stop sharing? <laughs> Okay, so what do I want to talk about further with um, Kuf? Because Kuf represents the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Therefore, she represents what, what is called the two witnesses within us, um, the two additional channels of Kundalini within us called the uh, Ida and Pingala systems or channels. And so she represents the central nervous system, which uh, in, the, in all the traditions are known as the throne of God. And she is here to, to protect our nervous system, but also to um, enliven it, to heal it uh, and protect us. And she is doing that through the polarities, and the polarities represent each of those channels, the Ida and Pingala represent the dark and the evil, the parasympathetic, the sympathetic, the good, the bad, the right, left, all the polarities within us. And she protects us by teaching us 
how to live with and work with the polarities in life, but also how to transform the polarities within us. And how do we transform those polarities by working with our healing and working with our central nervous system, which equals our subtle bodies. And I will get to that in just a second. In regards to the 35th gene key, this gene key speaks of the city of boundlessness, which um, speaks to the activation of our cities that each of our cities that each of us can activate. Um, what I want to say about that is our cities can only really come online when our nervous systems have been healed from traumas in our lives. Now, not everybody has, has real dramatic traumas or lifelong traumas, but many of us do, and we don't even knew it, know it. I am an example. I didn't realize how much trauma I had, um, and I've been working on that for the last year, but I'm digressing. <laughs> um, what I want to say is we've all had some level of trauma that has affected our subtle body and our nervous system. And, um, you know, it's, it's okay. It's wonderful for all of these systems, including the gene keys to list the shadows, you know, the repressed and the, and the reactionary version, but we need to go deeper. We need to look at the traumas that invited those particular reactions. So, and this is my theory, my insight, I can't say that it's true, but what I feel is if you mostly lean towards all the repressed versions of the shadows, which I was, um, you may be, your central nervous system may be stuck in what is called the dorsal back of brain freeze of the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, this comes from the polyvagal theory. And you are basically, your nervous system has been in freeze mode in the flight or fight system. So your system, and this is what I discovered through doing spit tests. <laughs> so I recommend if you're, uh, yeah, I recommend anybody doing spit tests if you're if you're not sure about traumas being held in your body. Um, my adrenaline spit test or cortisol spit test showed that while I had really no uh, no real functioning cortisol in in the morning and evening during the day, my cortisol levels were off the chart as if I was in constant having a constant trauma. They were way up in, in, and I didn't even know it, but my nervous system and my subtle bodies knew it and hadn't been healed, but it kept me in this kind of frozen mode, frozen and repressed mode that, like I said, I've been working for the last year, healing those stuck energies in my body, letting them come up, you know, bringing them in, integrating them not just embracing them, but fully letting them absorb back into me and letting them go or letting them integrate and, and they, they uh, dissipate on their own. Um, that has really helped me. It has allowed, um, it has allowed movement in my life because the subtle bodies are now healing and when your subtle bodies begin to heal, whatever awakenings that you have had become more consistent and stabilize, and then they allow for further uh, uh, deepening and further, um, what is the word, not levels, but you can go further in your awakening, go, go into deeper and deeper, higher, higher levels of reality. So your subtle bodies, your central nervous system has to be able to hold your awakenings. Okay, so I talked about the repressed version. Um, where are my notes? If you are in the more reactive, uh, if you find yourself in the reactive shadows, I mean, not, you know, you can have re reactions and repress, but if you find yourself like in all of your 
gene keys, you find that you're consistently in those, then you probably have trauma to deal with. Um, I would say if you're in the reactive, you are again in a trauma mode, but it's more sympathetic nervous system activated. Either way, um, we have to start looking beyond just the shadow descriptions and the mind um, looking for understanding. Understanding is great, that's the first step. But the next step is going into the body and uh, working with someone or, and I'll give you someone, uh, uh, refer someone, or going and discovering on your own the somatic exercises that can release those traumas from out of your subtle bodies so that they can create more openings for the light of Kuf to come in and um, activate and hold more awakenings for you. So um, what else do I want to say? Oh, yes. So healing both of the Ida and Pingala, the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic systems, the subtle bodies, healing those, what it allows for is the final ascent for kund kundalini can rise up to the on, 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 Anja center. <laughs> I've just had a mental plate, uh, break, um, blank. will rise up here and you can have self-realization and awakening, but there is also a final rising that rises up to the top of your brain uh, the thousand petal lotus. So she rises through the central channel. She could be risen up to here. She'd come here, but she could be resting here. Like in myself, she is resting here, waiting for more of the subtle body to be healed. And maybe, maybe this lifetime, maybe not this lifetime, she will rise up again through the central channel, awakening and pulsing through the thousand petal lotus of the brain, which is where all your cities uh, rest opening up through there like a fountain and then coming down. This is what the, um, the Christ thorn of Christ represented the blood coming down and you'll feel it coming down and the energy then um, pokes your heart and awakens your heart to a real heart awakening. Um, and that's when truly your true cities uh, can awaken for the, boundlessness in the, in the Kodan Ring of Miracles. So that is a true miracle to have Kundalini rise up through the um, top of your head and then into your heart. Um, what else do I want to say? Because um, this letter Kuf re refers to the back of, you know, the back of the head, the brainstem and, and the brain connection. This is the center for divine will and ego will. So if you find yourself, like myself, having massive headaches, for the last 10 years, I have had massive, massive headaches every two to three days in the back of my head that have been totally debilitating. And it's because it's a battle between ego will and divine will. It's the battle of the kuf and my animal nature. And I ha happen to have this number in my uh, soul contract as a goal, which means something I have to work on. So this has been a real battle for me. And I know this letter well. So if you get headaches in the back of your head, you know, what, what is, uh, what is battle there? Is there a battle between what you think you should do? Are you, um, hating yourself? Are you feeling guilty? Are you in self-doubt? All of those things are, are the evil things that Kuf does not want us to engage in. Remorse is absolutely necessary, but remorse is a quick thing. You feel remorse for your evil actions and words and profane speech and thoughts. Yes, I feel remorse and I ask the helpers to please heal whatever uh, misqualified energies I have, I have sent out, but then you let it go. Where we get into trouble is then we, we hate ourselves. we're full of judgment, and then we carry around guilt and shame, self-doubt, and self-hatred. Uh, Kuf does not want us to engage in that, and it will block you back here. And also, if you're doing things that you don't want to do, you're forcing yourself to do something when you really just want to sit and relax 
or not be involved, okay? So this is all of Kuf in the back of your head, the battle between inner truth and ego will. Um, what else do I want to say? Kuf all, um, and that, and all that battle that comes from your subtle bodies not being healed, all this trauma out there and false beliefs and shoulds and all this waging a battle, okay? So it's upsetting your entire nervous system. Kuf also uh, represents and tells us that uh, she represents the seventh day or the Sabbath and on the Sabbath, the seven in the Hebrew represents taking care of our bodies. So we have to also eat better and I'm, you know, get more quality sleep, all that stuff so that all of the good stuff that is rising and transforming us, the body, which the body is a result of the subtle bodies, we can handle it. We can handle all the light of Kuf and all of her transform, transformation abilities. Okay. The person that I re highly recommend you look into as far as doing somatic work, somatic healing work. His name is Raja Selvan. Raja, R-A-J-A, Selvan, S-E-L-V-A-M. You can find many of his talks and interviews on YouTube, but he also has a website called Inter Integral Somatic Psychology. And you can... Uh, buy a series of courses that will talk all about pre-perinatal um, traumas. He, he's, he's a leader in this field. He's uh, doing new things and his techniques are, are easy. I mean, I highly recommend just investigating him and his work or any kind of somatic healing so that uh, we can heal the traumas of being human. <laughs> the traumas that are are held in our subtle bodies and we can allow Kuf to do her work be a channel of light within us cutting through all the illusions of man and awakening us to our full potential into our full uh, kundalini rising heart awakening and our cities okay thank you I think I'm having a cat fight <laughs> I'm sorry for all the interruptions this time. Okay, until next time.